was thinking I'm going to do a little, uh, what I had in mind for perennials versus uh, annuals. Um, in the forest, I've been mixing the annuals with the annuals, of course, meaning they're only going to last for that one year, like tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, stuff like that, um, versus the perennials, which keep giving it each, each year. Um, I mean, annuals do grow great here. As you can see, the loofahs, you know, they're just popping up all over the place. They're going to give, and then they're going to die off. But at the same time, they're kind of like strangling the grapes over here, which is a perennial. Um, the grapes are going crazy. Like, I can't even get in here no more, just about. I mean, because all of these loofers are taking over. This one's just about ready. Actually, if you guys follow me, come down this way. What I was thinking was, hey, you know what this is? This is a hosta. Hey, Frank, you know what a hosta is? Hey, Frank. You know what a hasa is? That's gonna be a big issue. Okay, so this way, anyway. Oh, look at this. Little squirrely friend. Got a hold of that one before we did. We'll throw it in the compost pile. So, to keep on track, um, a lot of the uh, annuals, for example, this uh, eggplant didn't make it here because it's too shady. And, uh, you know, the guava tree here is just taking over. It's not getting enough sun where it's supposed to get, you know. The peppers, some of them are doing great, some are not, again, because of the sun and the shade. Again, this this is uh, east side, the sun rises over here, goes that way to the west side. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to uh, move Eric to the other side. I've done it before. I've done um, raised beds before, but I've never done it with uh, wood chip. Wood chip garden, like everything you see around here, growing like crazy is all because of the wood chips. Right. What I was thinking of, I'll try this in the compost pile there. Oh, wanted to show you this real quick before we get going. These loofers, for example, um, I might just keep them here because they're a real pain in the butt. They just take over. Look, they're all over the place. They just go crazy. These I didn't replant. I planted them once, and they just keep coming back. Uh, um, they just go nuts. They go take over everything, which is, I mean... I'm gonna have a lot of them. It's kind of cool. Let me see if I can. Oh, look at this one. This one's. This is one's like kind of past its prime, but that's that's the sponge inside. See? I'll take this off, and that's the sponge. And inside is all the seeds. I don't know if you can see them, but if we hit it. See, that's the seed. That's the lufa seed. So what happens is, um, a lot of them that I don't get to, these seeds fall down, and they just make more. You know, so um, this is a very small one. As you can see, there's big, huge ones here. This one's not quite ready. It's a little, you can um, basically to the touch, you can find out when it's ready. That one there is going to be a beauty. I'm going to have so many of them. Um, I'm going to give them away to my wife's friends. You know, and use some of them for actually for scrubbing our vegetables, stuff like that, when we make our juices and things like that. Also, these uh, banana pups that we had um, taken away the other day. And I'm going to give some of them away because we don't have room to plant them. But let's go down this way. What I was thinking, also, like, you see this, like, uh, collard greens grows great here. Um, collard greens grow just about anywhere. But peppers, this pepper here, it's not doing too good, too good because too much shade here. It's an annual. You know, I was hoping to get some bell peppers this year, but... Uh, because of where I put them in in the garden here that one never made anything didn't even bud It's just not it's just not cutting and I'm not too happy about that uh, This is another new addition addition to the uh, garden. This is called a uh, miracle berry um, It gives a little fruit a little red fruit when you eat it. It turns everything Sweet so whatever you eat will turn sweet We're gonna have to put it in the ground. I haven't had time to do that yet But like I said, some of the things I got thrown in the garden, I mean, the trees are great. Oh, look at this. Here comes all my berries again. Look at that. These are the best. Love it. But they do leave, uh, they do stain. Here, here you go, camera girl. Good? All right. Peppers, for example. These little Brazilian peppers, my favorite pepper at the time right now. I love peppers, hot peppers, sweet peppers. These are in between. They're more sweet than hot. 
They're fantastic flavor. That one over there, for example, is not doing too good because it's kind of covered. You know, there's not enough sun getting in there. Look at all the butterflies here. I mean, everything is pollinating great, but, you know, it needs the sun. It needs the, the water. And that's another problem, watering these things, too. I mean, like I tell you guys, most of my forest does not need any water. I do not water the mature plants, the mature trees, all the fruit trees. Um, they're on their own. It's just like being in the woods, just like being in the forest. I mean, God takes care of those guys. These little guys here, they need water. I mean, you know, so I have to drag this hose out all the time, back and forth. Look at this, this eggplant over here, not doing too good. She's not happy. You know, so I'm thinking we have to move them around because she's an annual. And I did have one that was like a tree. It lasted for the longest time. I think it's because of my my uh, wood chip garden here. You know, the, the soil is really, really, really fertile. So what got me thinking about this was, if you look in the back here, it's my passion fruit. This is my passion fruit vine. It starts all the way down there from my dragon fruit. And I'll see if you can see it. I got two types. I got a purple and I got a yellow. Those things, I mean, they just grow like crazy. But my neighbor's got this, you know, just weeds just killing everything, grabbing it and killing it. It's not, uh, it's not helping. Uh, the other one is over there. My original thought was, come down this way, let me show you. To have them against the fence, you use the fence line because you also, you have to use whatever you got, right? Um, but, a lot of these things are, I mean, like this acorn here. She's growing, but because of the shade from the banana leaves, she's not doing as good as she should be doing. This one here, the other acorn, again, it's an annual. Um, just starting to make fruit, starting to flower here, it's got a few buds on it, it's going to make some fruit, I got to cut some of these bananas down, so you got to make that trade off between the bananas or the eggplant, and these guys, they're not ready yet, I mean, we just took down the, uh, the bananas the other day, so one of these guys, depending on which one has the, which I think is 27 leaves, it's going to start, you know, the pod, and make the, the bananas again, but, um, so, I don't know. It's a trade-off. It's hard to decide which one you want, which one you're going to do. So what I was thinking, when I really, uh, before I started the permaculture whole project, before I started the, uh, you know, the wood chips and all this stuff, I uh, started research. I did a lot of gardening. I'm, I've moved this thing around a million times. I mean, I did uh, the race, the Mel Bartholomew, the, you know, the raised bed gardens and all that stuff. Never had really success. I did sometimes, sometimes not. Um, most of the time when I had it like in a row, if they got a disease, they all got a disease, you know. Um, my tomatoes last year, I planted them here in the, in the permaculture forest. They did phenomenal. I had them over here. And actually, I saw today, there's still a, uh, a little tomato growing here. See that? That's a tomato. And I had the tomatoes right here. And right there, in between each arch here, and use the arch for supports. And they gave like millions. I'll put a, a picture in. I'll edit the picture in from last year. You'll see all the tomatoes that we had. We had all kinds of tomatoes. I had them over here too. This thing, I don't know if you guys noticed. This thing was to support the tomatoes that I had going on in here. I mean, the tomatoes were that high, really. So, the wood chips itself, the soil is super fertile, but as things grow, like these bananas over there, they're cutting off, you know, the sunlight, it's going to affect uh, all the, the, the annuals that we're growing in. And it's a pain in the butt to drag that hose all around. So, what I'm thinking is, I might just go back to the west side, go with my raised guard, my raised beds. Um, take a lot of this stuff. We were talking about breaking down the, uh, the hugel culture. This thing has been breaking down. You know, so a lot of this I want to break it down. Put it into raised beds. Out in here. And uh, line them up. Me and my son put up these, uh, these panels here. Um, those two in the middle cattle panels. These ones are great. Um, very expensive. Pain in the butt to put them in the truck. 
even though I have a pickup truck, it was hard to get them in there, fold them and stuff like that. These other ones are like for uh, rebar, for cement. Um, yeah, they rust and stuff like that, but they do the job. So we put this all out there. Um, I had them in the front over there. I was going to do, um, you know, the loofahs back there, but the loofahs are just taking over where they want to go. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm going to use this whole side here for uh, cucumbers and climbing vines and stuff like that. Put some raised beds over here. Um, using the compost from the hugel culture and put my tomatoes, put my annuals, my tomatoes, my peppers, my eggplant, um, things that, you know, just give one season and then you got to redo it. I'll leave my little flower bed here. Uh, it's been a little disrepair because I haven't been pulling the weeds and stuff like that. I haven't been watering them. There's no water system here. We do have a sprinkler system. Rarely ever use it. So I might just put like micro system. I've had it before. I just hook it up to these guys here. Separate the zones. Have my, my beds here. Have some, you know, box raised beds here. So I'll have small ones here, maybe like the peppers and then the eggplant and then the tomatoes. And then we'll do cucumbers and zucchini and yellow squash, stuff like that. I'll leave one big hookah culture for pumpkins and stuff like that. So that's the, uh, that's the thinking right now. All right, so and then also I'll just leave uh, my rosemary, stuff like this. This is a perennial. This um, doesn't like a lot of water. It's just like a caper bush. But, you know, it's doing very good in here. My aloes, put them in these things. I can move them around whenever I want to move them around. And, um, you know, the other ones that I have in the ground, they're doing all right. But I would much rather prefer to where I can move those guys around. Guys, right, so that's that's another episode. If you guys have any comments, any any uh, suggestions, I really would appreciate it. Um, it's not easy. I know I move stuff around all the time. It's it's a work in progress, but uh, that's what's coming into my mind right now. Just looking at this monster over here, um, you know, it's kind of hard to uh, deal with that because you really don't want to pull them out because they're growing right now. It's summertime. But I'm going to have to eventually make a decision what I'm going to do. Um, these guys, look at that. I mean, they're great for loofahs and stuff like that. But maybe we'll just make a dedicated um, trellis for that and move all annuals over there. Will it be homegrown, fresh, organic? Or will it be GMO, insecticide, suicide? Two green thumbs up and we'll get to you next time.